Hey, this is Rudy Jones of PalmettoStateBaseball.com, and welcome to That Was the Week That Was in South Carolina College Baseball for March 19th. Look back at a few of the games from midweek, then uh, concentrate on the games for the weekend. Maybe look ahead to what's going on this coming week in college baseball involving the South Carolina teams. Uh, several games on Tuesday night were played. Among them, Bob Jones snapped a 13-game losing streak by beating Columbia International in four field in Greenville. Uh, nice win for the Bruins, their first win since opening weekend. So I know they'd like to build on that and have a few more wins, have a chance at uh, perhaps getting a winning season this year for the first time in school history. Also on Tuesday, College of Charleston had a lead late against Clemson, but the Tigers rallied to go ahead 4-3. to three. The Cougars had the tying run at third base in the ninth inning. We could not get the runner across. Uh, also on Tuesday, Coastal Carolina got a nice win over a ranked Campbell team 12-9. to nine. Walford saw its 14-game winning streak snapped against Georgia, 10 to nine, uh, 8. Excuse me. South Carolina beat Presbyterian 5 to nothing, and USC Upstate beat the Citadel 25 to 10. That's the most runs that the uh, excuse me, the Spartans start to say rifles for you old timers. Most runs the Spartans have scored in the Mike McGuire era up there, so that was a nice win for them. On Wednesday, a nice Division II game between Newberry and USC Aiken. Newberry came in with a six-game winning streak. Aiken came in with an eight-game winning streak, and Newberry won eight to four. So that was a good uh, Division II game there. Speaking of Division II, both those teams are chasing North Greenville in the uh, Palmetto State Baseball Division II rankings. The Crusaders increased their winning streak to 10 with a sweep of King over the weekend, and they are now sitting at 24-2, and two, ranked number one in most, if not all, the National Division II polls as well. Uh, today is Landon Powell's birthday, so happy birthday, Coach. And the Crusaders look at their prime for a good defense of their national championship of a year ago. Uh, moving on to weekend stuff. Friday, several of the teams got rained out, as you, as you well know. Maybe you were sitting out in the rain as it was going on, hoping to get a game in. But uh, one of the best things on Friday was Citadel swept Kansas 4-3. to They got a walk-off home run in game one to win that game, so that was a nice win for them. Uh, both Clemson and South Carolina had their games rained out on Friday, uh, so they played doubleheaders on Saturday. South Carolina was at Georgia. The Gamecocks were 17-1 going into that series, but really, let's face it, their uh, level of competition has not been the best so far this year. You know, teams are – anything can happen in college baseball on a given day, but the Gamecocks just really mostly had more talent than any of the teams they were playing. Uh, they did struggle with a few of those games. They were challenged, I should say, but they did win. Uh, of course, they won the first nine games, lost to Clemson, won the next two against Clemson, and they were, like I say, sitting at 17-1 going into Athens. And it looked to be the sternest test of the season so far for the Gamecocks in that series. The Bulldogs were rolling along. They had just come off that win over Walford. They uh, hit a lot of home runs, had a couple of guys hitting over 500 for the season. But uh, things looked good for the Gamecocks early in game one on Saturday. They got ahead 3 nothing. Then Georgia came back and went ahead 4-3. to Gamecocks were in trouble uh, going to the ninth inning down 4-3. to But they got a couple of runners on. And then Michael Brazel got a big pinch hit double down the right field line to give the Gamecocks a 5-4 win. Uh, uh, Brazel, of course, was a starter for the Gamecocks most all of last season. And really, he starred in the non-conference part of the schedule, but he struggled once he got into uh, the SEC play. This year, he was beat out by Braylon Wimmer at shortstop, who moved over from second base. And it seems like uh, Braswell has kept a good attitude about what's going on. He is an excellent defensive player. They bring him in quite frequently for defensive purposes. And he uh, came through with that big hit on Saturday's game one. Game two, who would have thought that the Gamecocks would run rule Georgia? They did. One behind a complete game by uh, Noah Hall, they won 12 to two. And you think, well, that's pretty good. They uh, they did that. Well, on Sunday, they run rule the George the Bulldogs again, 12 to one. The Gamecocks continued to hit home runs. Uh, on Saturday, both uh, Gavin Cassis and uh, excuse me, on Sunday, both Gavin Cassis and Will McGillis hit two home runs. So they were rolling along on sat on Saturday. Uh, Ethan Petrie hit three home runs. The Gamecocks hit 56 home runs so far this season. They only hit 58 in 55 games last season. 
Uh, some people say the ball may be juiced. Maybe it is. But can a team improve that much over the course of uh, one season? Now, of course, Coach Mark Kingston did go out and recruit a lot of players out of the transfer portal. Now, of course, Petrie, Petrie excuse me, is a freshman. So, uh, you know, he, he brought him in not a transfer, but a lot of other transfers have help, helped. Gavin Cassis, who uh, had trouble breaking into the lineup at Vanderbilt, he's got 12 homers to lead the Gamecocks so far this year. And I mentioned the hitting, but the pitching has been great. Will Sanders had one of his better outings uh, on Saturday. No haul with a complete game, and Jack Mahoney was sharp again on Sunday as the Gamecocks closed out that series. Interesting to see the Gamecocks became the first team to move to between 20 games this season in Division I. Uh, they have a game against Charlotte in Charlotte's truest field in Uptown Charlotte on Tuesday. Then the Gamecocks play their first SEC home series Friday against Missouri. Now it's shaping up to be a tough series because Missouri swept Tennessee this weekend. Uh, Tennessee been ranked as high as number two in several of the polls. Uh, people were making a popular choice that Tennessee is going to be going very far this year, and they may still do that. But uh, Tennessee's coach said that you know they are not the same team they were last year, and at least for the first weekend of SEC play, they're right. Uh, moving over to Clemson, uh, game one Saturday against Duke, they stranded 16 runners. Uh, you're not going to beat a whole lot of teams when you strand 16 runners and only push two runs across. Uh, Duke got a couple of home runs in the early innings. They made him stand up for a 3-2 win. The Tigers looked much better in game two, winning 14-9. to They still had to deal with some home runs from Duke. Duke's a uh, power-hitting club. Then on Sunday, back and forth game, Back and forth, back and forth. Clemson takes a 7-6 to six lead into the top of the ninth inning, and Duke scores five runs. The Blue Devils wind up winning that game 11-8. They win the series 2-1, to one, and Clemson is sitting at 12-8 and eight now, 1-2 and two in the ACC, and I'm sure that the coaches there are wondering what to do about their bullpen because it really struggled in a couple of the games over the weekend. Uh, that'll be one of the things they look for as they go on in the season. Uh, elsewhere, Charleston and Southern extended a winning streak to six games. They started with a win over Georgia the previous weekend, and they won five more this week, including a sweep of UNC Asheville to open Big South Conference play. That was a nice series win for Mark McMillan and the Buccaneers. Uh, also, Presbyterian won two of three against High Point. That was a good win. They had been struggling, but they got those two nice wins. Uh, they're two and one Big South Conference play right now. Coastal Carolina got two of three against James Madison on the road in Sunbelt play. And Charleston Southern won two of three against Stony Brook at home in the Colonial Athletic Association. So those were nice wins there. Uh, in Division II level, USC Aiken had a big series at Columbus State in the Peach Belt Conference. The uh, Pacers and Cougars were 1-2 in the Peach Belt Conference standings. And USC Aiken was able to win two out of three with a couple of one-run victories. They're all three one-run games, in fact, so well-played games. And I'm just looking right now like those two teams may be the ones that are the top contenders to win the Peach Belt Conference regular season championship and be top seed for the tournament. Still early to go in that, though. Uh, also, Newberry has won 10 straight. Now they got a nice win over Virginia Wise, a series win. Uh, they won the first game on Saturday 11-4. to They won the second game 13-9. to And on Sunday... They won 19 to 16 over Virginia Wise, and Virginia Wise had the potential winning run at the plate with the bases loaded as the game ended. Uh, interesting thing for the Wolves, they hit 374 for the weekend. They were 40 of 107. They scored 43 runs in three games. That's a pretty nice deal for them there. Uh, moving on to junior college ranks. Tim Wallace, the Spark Room Methodist, picked up his 1300th career win. Sunday in game two against USC Salkahatchee. Uh, it was the eighth straight win for the, excuse me, I believe maybe the seventh straight win for the uh, Pioneers. They're now sitting at 18 and eight. They are five and oh, six and oh, excuse me, in region 10 play. They're a half game behind Florence Darlington Tech, which also won all four games this weekend. The Stingers are seven and oh, half game ahead of Spartan Methodist. It was interesting, all four of the region 10 series this weekend were involved in sweeps. Uh, I mentioned Florence Darlington Tech over Lewisburg, Spartan Methodist over USC Salkahatchee. USC Sumter got some tight wins over USC Union, uh, but the 
Fire Ants did win all four. And then USC Lancaster was swept by the new kid on the block in Region 10, Gaston College. Uh, frustrating loss for the Lancers on Sunday when Gaston College got a walk-off homer in the bottom of the seventh inning to complete the sweep of the series. Uh, but it's, it's still looking up. It's early. There's only been two weeks out of the seven weeks of the Region 10 schedule. So it is, you know, looking pretty good right now. It's going to be a good series this weekend when Florence Darlington Tech and USC Sumter meet at Daly Field in Florence. That's going to be one of the top series of the coming week involving South Carolina teams. Let's see what else we've got going on this coming week. Uh, Bob Jones is at Fort Lauderdale trying to get their uh, winning streak going. Uh, Claflin and Voorhees. Claflin, unfortunately, has lost the last 21 games. They're all 21 games so far under Coach Scott Nestor. The Panthers played at Virginia State this last weekend. They got beat in game one of that doubleheader on Saturday, 3-2 to two in a walk-off fashion, and then they are blown out the next game. Played pretty well on Sunday, but again lost 5-1. to one. Uh, Voorhees has lost his last four games, but that should be a good series. He'll be playing in Denmark on Tuesday. Uh, elsewhere, Anderson's at North Georgia. Charleston Southern, as, as I mentioned, is hot. They're playing at the Citadel on Tuesday. College of Charleston is at Appalachian State. be a nice series. Davidson has a really good program. They're going to be visiting Presbyterian on Tuesday. Uh, Clemson is at home against Winthrop. Winthrop has been struggling lately. Of course, they got swept by Campbell, but Campbell is the best team in the Big South, or at least one of the top two. Uh, USC Upstate may want to argue about that. Uh, speaking of USC Upstate, they're at Queens uh, in Charlotte. And Walford tries to snap its four-game losing streak at Georgia Tech. The Terriers lost all three games against Xavier over this past weekend. That was a tough weekend for them. Uh, on Wednesday, we have uh, Clemson going to Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State's one of the newer Division I teams, and I'm sure that Clemson uh, wanted to set up some kind of a series with them to get to travel. They're also going to be down there getting ready for the Georgia Tech series next weekend, which is the second ACC series for the Tigers, so it'll be in the metro Atlanta area. Maybe they'll get to hit the uh, the varsity a time or two. Who knows? Uh, also going up this weekend, UNC Pembroke is going to be at North Greenville. That'll be one of the top series in the uh, Colonial, uh, in Conference Carolinas, I'm sorry. Uh, elsewhere, Newberry is host to, Carl, to Carson Newman. Presbyterian is at home against Charleston Southern. Two of the teams that are wanting to move up there, PC 2-1, and one, Charleston Southern 3-0 oh in Big South play, so that'll be nice. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, South Carolina will be at home against Missouri. That should be an interesting series for them. And just looking quickly, uh, Walford opened Southern Conference play at home against VMI, and the Citadel opened Southern Conference play at home against Mercer. Uh, I believe that'll wrap it up for this week. On that, This was the week that was. That was the week that was in South Carolina College Baseball. I uh, look forward to listening to my Palmetto State Baseball podcast. I'll usually relieve it or release it on Thursdays. There may be some changes this week, some delays in some of the things I do. I volunteer to help out at the NCAA Women's Regional at uh, Bon Secours Arena in Greenville this coming weekend. Uh, I may be busy most of the day. Some of the times I may not get all the boxes and updates on games posted until well after midnight. I'm just going to have to see how busy I stay. Uh, After I agreed to do this, I realized that I probably shouldn't have and be able to keep going, but I didn't want to go back on my word. But anyway, I'm going to do my best to try to keep up with what's going on, and I will eventually get caught up. I hope you enjoy PalmettoStateBaseball.com. You can follow me on Twitter at PalmettoBase. Right now on PalmettoStateBaseball.com, you may have to scroll down a couple of pages, but I've got a poll. Which two teams would you want to see South Carolina's permanent opponents be in the Southeastern Conference? The SEC announced earlier this week that they were going to go to a schedule of two permanent opponents for each team and rotate the other eight games among the remaining, the other eight series that remain among the remaining 13 teams once Texas and Oklahoma get into the league. Again, please uh, interact on my page. Give me comments. I want to hear what you think about my coverage. Uh, I do a lot of this for me, but I also want to just help grow the sport of college baseball, particularly in South Carolina. Uh, If you enjoy the stuff, drop me a line. You can email me at rudyjones at palmettostatebaseball.com. You can comment on any of the posts. You can message me on Twitter. Um, That's about as technically uh, 
erudite, as, uh, as advanced as I am, a bit of a Luddite. I uh, don't know some of the most modern things that are going on. I'm still trying to figure out green screen, which I may eventually do at some point. But, again, I hope you've enjoyed this little weekend update. Uh, please check them online. I also have at PanamaStateBaseball.com up-to-date standings for Region 10 in Junior College, new team of the week in South Carolina, the uh, team rankings for each classification in the state or, or uh, for teams. And, again, I just try to do something to promote the game of college baseball. That'll do it for me tonight. It's Rudy Jones of PalmettoStateBaseball.com saying nothing could be finer than baseball in South Carolina. Good night.